Absagami star goalie Matt McCormick, who's now the starting goalkeeper for Wheeling Jesuit University. Good morning, Matt. How are you? Hey, good morning. Dave. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks for joining us so early in the morning. I know these college oh, kids. These college kids. It's uh, nine a.m. Might as well be five a.m. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, tell us about what's going on, and uh, you guys had a real big win this week over number one ranked University of Charleston in the MEAC. There, two nothing. Yeah, that was that was a big game. There, uh, we started off uh, our season pretty well, but then we lost a couple games that we thought we should have won, and uh, come home against number one ranked team in the nation and got a big result that got us back on track. What was that like, that game, you know, you're facing, obviously, you know, one of the best teams in the country, and uh, as the goalkeeper, you know, a lot of that's on you to kind of keep that team off the board. Yeah, well, I knew I would probably have to have a pretty big day. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't think I had to do that much. The guys in front of me did a great job, and everyone on the team did a great job. We scored two goals, and to be honest, I think we could have scored two more, but uh, it was just a great team performance all around by everybody. I, I misspoke there. I said MEAX. It's, it's the Mid-Eastern Conference um, how's the season going for you so far? Oh, it's going well. You know that that win right there put us back on track because we had lost to uh, a team Concord that we probably should have got a couple more points out of at home. Um, but that put us right back in the picture for the conference uh, top four go to the tournament, and we're right now tied for uh, second. So that was a big result there. Now, what what was it like uh, leading up to your game against University of Charleston? You know, you said number one in the country, so obviously probably the best team on your schedule uh how much anticipation was there before that game what was the pregame like any uh any trash talking going on <laughs> well actually uh we weren't allowed to trash talk much because <laughs> we got in trouble before against our rivals so we were trash talking on twitter we got in trouble for that so we weren't allowed to do much of that but uh um the honestly build up was we were all calm we knew what we had to do coach regan put together a game plan where we sit back and just absorb the pressure we knew they were good going forward but they were a little shaky at the back so we just uh, we took the pressure a little bit and then counterattacked, and we got our first goal. And from then on, we knew we were going to win the game, to be honest with you. Now, as a goalkeeper in college, you know, for some of these high school guys that don't really know what it's like on the college level, what's the most difficult thing that you learned, you know, coming out? You obviously had a pretty good career at Absagami. Um, I believe you, you set the school record for wins there. What yeah. What's the biggest difference in college from between that, that type of soccer and the type you saw at Absagami? Well, uh, the real difference is um, I think what I learned most coming out was being able to communicate with your teammates and uh, being able to command your box and things like that. Like, fortunately, I was lucky enough to sit for a couple of years behind Cody Thompson here, who's now the GA, uh, one of my coaches. So he was able to teach me how to communicate effectively with your back line and be able to direct your box and just command everything. Because in high school, really, it, was, it wasn't all about that. And in college, it's really a big thing. You, you get smushed if you don't talk to your back line. <laughs> Uh, interesting you said that it was fortunate you got to sit behind an upperclassman you know a lot of these high school kids when they're going to pick out a college a lot of times they want to know how quickly they can get in the lineup uh how much did that do for you being able to sit on the sidelines for a year or two and kind of take in the college experience and figure out what was gonna, what it was going to take to be successful at that level yeah yeah that was huge for me because even in high school i had to sit a few years behind ryan taylor who's another great mentor for me and led into my senior year where i had a great year but I knew, luckily, in that in high school experience, that led me to believe that that was the best route to go. So coming out when I was picking my school, I picked the school where I knew I would probably be sitting for a couple of years. But it, it gave me the opportunity to learn a lot from a guy who was a first-team all-region player and, and starting four years. So, I mean, obviously, when you come out, you want to play immediately. But for me, it was just it was just uh, very beneficial to learn a little bit. What was your first day of campus like when you when you get out there the first day of practice? You're uh you know you're an 18 year old freshman and you you think you're a stud because you had a great high school career and how, how much of an eye open experience was that the first couple of days of uh, your freshman year? Oh yeah, it was it was something else. It was like first year playing on varsity. You just you, they put you back in your place a little bit, but <laughs> um you know it's just good to be around guys who have the same passion as you and they they help they ease you into it. So it's not it's not the worst thing in the world to be put in your place, be humble. <laughs> I, I think a lot of high school kids might disagree, but you know they'll, they'll learn as yeah. they go, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, you know, a, as you're going through this season, um, what are you focused on now? I guess you're a junior now, right? Yep, absolutely. 
So where's your confidence level at this point? You know, you're, you're kind of in the starting lineup there. You, you've worked your tail off to get to where you are now. Uh, how do you feel like your game is this year, and where do you feel like you're at confidence-wise going into the month, month of October? Yeah, I mean, uh, going into this season, I knew we were bringing in three freshmen, so obviously I had to stay on my toes. But I had a very good spring season last year, so I knew I was in a pretty good position to start. But it's uh, my game right now is better than it's ever been. I'm commanding my box better than I've ever been. I'm stopping shots better than I've ever been. And uh, I owe that a lot to those just coaches that I've had throughout my career, and Cody Thompson, Jim Regan, Tim McKenna, everybody who's ever helped me get to where I am today. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm very confident in what I'm doing. Like, when I stepped on the field against Charleston, I'm usually nervous before games, but for some reason that day I was confident I could be. I was confident in everything we were doing, and uh, I just I knew we'd go out there and win that game. Um, did, did you hear from any of your uh... – Absagami guys after that win? Or are you still in contact yeah, with any yeah. of those guys? Oh, yeah. I talk to them all the time. We have a group chat going where we just, <laughs> you know, get banter going and stuff like that. But they all were, they were all proud of me. They were all texting me, just, you know, happy for what I was doing. And I was telling them about it. And I don't know. It was just a great experience all around. Now, I was reading a little bit of your bio. We're talking with uh, Matt McCormick, former Absagami goalie, who's now at Wheeling Jesuit University, starting goalkeeper, doing a great job up there. I was reading a little bit of your bio, and it says, uh, you know, one of your one of your kind of idols is Tim Howard. Uh, how much do you look at other goalkeepers? How much do you study them? And uh, or do you, do you kind of just kind of find your own way as a goalkeeper? Well, uh, Tim Howard, really for me, the studying started when when he joined Everton because that's the team that I now support, and I'm, I'm up for every game. I'm watching them every game, so I'm watching him every game. And his, 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 the way he commands his box and the way he communicates with his defenders was huge for me, and that's. That's something I really wanted to pick up on because I felt like that was a weak area in my game coming out of high school. So I really wanted to see if I could learn a little bit about that. But shot stopping wise, I love to watch David De Gea. He's incredible at saving shots. So the way he th- the way he does things, I love watching him. Now, do you have a cool looking goalie uniform? <laughs> yeah, it's nice powder <laughs> blue. It looks good. And, you know, there you go. Eyes look good. <laughs> hey, gotta look good when you're goalkeeper. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, for the pictures. <laughs> that's what we do it for. Picture saves. There you go. Um, Nat, when, when you're a goalkeeper, I, I've always wondered this. I played a just a very little bit of goalie. You know, I was a little kid, eight, nine years old. I only played about two years of soccer, that kind of thing. But, you know, for maybe somebody who's never played goalie or never even played soccer, when you're facing a PK situation, you know, in the playoffs or something like that, whether it be high school or college, what's going through your mind as your, your heels are on that back line and you know the game is in your hands? Right. I heard you're a big baseball star, by the way, in college. But, uh, uh, I don't know about star, but <laughs> <laughs> more of a backup second baseman. Uh, I hear you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when, you're, when you're on that line, and you got a guy come, like shooting at you. I mean, all the pressure's on him. He's got the whole goal to aim at. You're just you're just there to save it if you can. So, I mean, in the state championship in high school, I actually saved the penalty and the rebound. So, I mean, that it's just something where I had I had like a, a scouting report on where he was going to go. So I knew the whole time where he was going to go. It's just all about. <laughs> looking him in the eyes and psyching him out and getting in his head, making him think about it, and just going out and doing what you do. Now, your your sister, Kristen, uh, she's a freshman now at, uh, I believe, up in New London, Connecticut, and was a former yeah, Absagami yeah. star, uh, tennis player in her own right. Who's the best athlete in the family? Oh, it's got to be her. I mean, <laughs> she took me on in tennis, and I couldn't even return a ball. It was yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. All right, you, you're trying to get into good graces for mom here when you get home for Thanksgiving, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, know, I know your mom's following your career as well, and she's posting all over Facebook. Um, she ever yeah. she ever do anything to embarrass you, show up at campus or anything? Oh, always. She just shows up <laughs> unannounced all the time, just comes up in my room, starts cleaning stuff. <laughs> hey, that's what, that's what moms are for, right? Yeah, I love it. Can't get enough of it. All right, Matt, I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us here on the South Jersey Sports Report, and good luck the rest of the day. The rest of the way, we'll be keeping tabs on you. Thanks so much for having me. All right, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. All right, bye. That was uh, Matt McCormick, great young man at Absagami High School. Thank him for joining us, talking a little bit of college soccer.